boys and girls. Today we're continuing our unit on homes by studying some animal homes. Our learning target for today is I can observe the way animals design their homes for the environment they live in. You should be noticing a theme by now in this unit, whether we're talking about Native American homes or our own homes or animal homes, the house you choose has to do with where you live the kind of materials you can get, or the kind of thing that makes sense for where you're living. So let's dig into some animal homes. Now, one of the things you should consider is humans are not your only neighbors. Take a look at some animal homes that you might find in your neighborhood. Bird nests. Birds build their nests in many different places in trees, on buildings, on the ground covered in grasses, or on top of tall poles, just to name a few spots. They can be made of a variety of materials. You might see a squirrel den in your neighborhood. Excuse me, a squirrel dray. Did you know squirrel homes were called drays? I didn't before I was learning this lesson. Some squirrels live in hollowed out dens inside tree trunks. Others, like this squirrel, live in a pile of leaves and twigs high up in tree branches, called a dray. Rabbit Warren Rabbits burrow underground to build their home. Rabbits like to connect their burrows with tunnels. These big underground networks are called warrens. Reduce, reuse, and recycle Birds, squirrels, rabbits, and other small animals will often use recycled materials like fur, hair, and paper to build their homes. Some will even reuse homes built by other creatures. Another animal home you might find in your neighborhood are arthropod tunnels. Arthropods are, are small creatures um, like insects. So insects and arthropods, like this pill bug, chew tunnels in soft wood and burrow under rocks and logs to make their homes. Now at the beginning, when I said animal homes, you were probably imagining furry animals like the rabbit and the squirrel. But birds and insects and arthropods are all part of the animal kingdom. And so when we talk about animal homes, we're talking about all of these living creatures including wasps. Wasp nests might be another kind of home you have in your neighborhood. Now, wasps may be an undesirable neighbor to some, but their diet of smaller insects helps them reduce pests around gardens and farms. Social wasp species build nests by chewing wood fiber into a pulp and molding that into a hanging cluster of hexagonal cells. Here are some other wild animal neighbors. Other animals that make their homes near people include snakes, mice, raccoons, foxes, possums, or opossums, bats, coyotes, and frogs. What other animals have you seen or heard near your home? Pause the video and brainstorm, then put your thoughts in the chat in this lesson. Now, for our fourth graders, you've been learning about fossils in your mystery science lesson lately. Learning about homes animals make nowadays can help scientists understand animal homes in the past. Remember the pill bug and the arthropod homes on that earlier page? How they chewed the tunnels in the soft wood and burrowed into rocks and logs? Well, similar to that, the teredo species of clam burrows into pieces of wood in the ocean. Here's a picture of a fossil from the Burke Museum down in Seattle uh, in its education collection. This fossil shows the preserved trails of teredo clams from millions of years ago. Do you see how it's similar to the arthropod tunnels in the wood? Okay. Now here's your assignment for today. And it's possible, depending on the weather, 
or depending on what's available to you and your family, but you might want to wait and finish this one on a sunny day or on the weekend. Because your assignment is to do an outdoor nature walk scavenger hunt. You're going to take a walk around an outdoor space near you. It could be your yard if you have a yard, it could be a park, uh, anywhere that's outside. Could even be just down, down the sidewalk with your family if you guys go on a walk in town. When you take this outdoor walk in a space near you, you're going to do an animal scavenger hunt to look for things that have to do with animal homes. But before you do that, you'll want to get a journal and write down the list of things you're looking for. It'll be on the next page and you will want to pause the video to do it. I'll also make a printable Google Doc in this assignment if you have a printer in your house. So here's what you're looking for. The first part of our list, signs of animals around your home. You might find plant leaves with nibble marks, scratches or holes in the ground, or even scat, which is the science name for animal poop. The next thing you're looking for are two living materials that animals could use to build their homes. Living materials mean things that were once alive or attached to something that was alive. Think about plant material or fur and feathers, stuff like that. Now look for two non-living materials that animals could use to build their homes. Things that were never alive or were alive a very long time ago. So maybe scraps of paper, bits of string, things like that. Maybe just like a dirt and a hole in the ground. You'll figure it out. So let's review. You want signs of animals living near your home, two living materials that animals could use to build their homes, two non-living materials that animals could use to build their homes, then you're looking for an animal that flies and an animal that crawls. Those are the next two pieces of the list. Bonus, here's an extra, extra one if you can, a neighborhood animal's home. Now just look, don't disturb the animal's home. You wouldn't want someone to come and disturb your home. In fact, Remember that animals like their privacy too. Be a good neighbor. Don't pick up or pester any animals that you find on your walk. Just use your eyes and enjoy your animal neighbors by looking and enjoying them. Have fun. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.